Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God we don't have those kind of rules that they have, brothers. Some brothers probably like, yeah, I wish you had. Don't notify. Don't come and see me till you notify me. Amen. But listen, anyway, what ended up happening is she said, listen, go tell Mordecai that I'm going to go see the king. And it's not lawful for me to do it. So if I die, I'm going to die, but I'm going. Potential rose up in her. Right. Amen? Amen? Because she realized that when Mordecai told her, how do you know that God didn't put you in this place for a time like now? Yeah. And how many know that God has not called many of you into the kingdom at this particular time in your life? Right. Amen? That's right. For God's glory. Yeah. Potential raised up in her. She went to go see the king. Guess what? Her head didn't get cut off. And she was able to stop the massacre of the Jews. Tell somebody potential. Ask somebody, where's your potential at? Hallelujah. Potential rolls up in her. We're going to go into a couple more, but let me just address a couple things. There are some things that hinder potential. Amen? Amen. Things that hinder potential. One of the things that hinder potential is fear. Amen? Fear will hinder potential. God will give you a dream or a vision or he will put something in your heart and it will look like it's too big for you and we'll get scared and we'll say, I can't do that. And we'll say, I don't see how that's going to happen. That's going to cost money, God, and that's something I ain't got right now. I don't know anybody, God, that, that can do that. I do this too, but why do we give God excuses when He tells us that we can do something? God. God. We're talking about the devil. Now, yeah, the devil will tell you some lies. He'll say you can do something to get you out to get you messed up. But God don't lie to you. So if God places something in your heart and says that you can't do something, then why do we tell God we can't? God. Who just really needs you to just step out and say, all right, I'm, I'm going to do it. And then he opens the door and makes the way pass and makes the path clear. God. Tell somebody, stop, stop, stop questioning God all the time. Stop questioning God all the time. Give God reasons why you can't do what he said you can do. Because when you say you can't do what God said you can do, you make God out to be. And the Bible says, and it also says, let every man be a liar. And let God be true. Hallelujah. Amen. So potential. But the, the, one of the hindrances to potential is fear. The fear of what happens if I step out. Faith and fear are not friends. Amen. You're either going to walk in one or you're going to walk in the other. Amen. But you can't walk in fear and faith at the same time. It can't be. You either going to have faith or you going to have fear. Fear will stop potential to stop dreams. How many people are in the grave right now that have potential but fear choked it? Amen. Hallelujah. People that have lived this life walk with God. And God put something deep down inside their spirit, and because of fear, they didn't access it, and they died without living a dream. Wow. I think God is not without option. Yes. Amen. Amen. God said, okay, well, you sleep on it, and you don't want that, then get somebody else, and we'll do it. Tell somebody potential. potential. Another hindrance to potential is complacency. Being comfortable where you're at. In your relationship with God, where you are right now. Everything's good. I have a regular prayer life. I, I fast once a week or twice a week. I, I go out and I minister to the, to the lost. And it's great and it's good. And I'm having a wonderful time. And, and, and I'm just really, really comfortable right now. Complacency. And then God says... 
Come on up a little higher. God, I'm not used to that. Come on up a little higher. God, I, I, that's an unfamiliar territory, and I'm having a good time where I'm at. And let me tell you from experience, when you get comfortable, God will find a way to make you uncomfortable. Amen? Oh, yeah. Guess what? I was comfortable. Oh, yeah, everybody in the church loved me. Comfortable. Had a good cushy position in the church. Working in the ministry. Had a oh, everything was great. And God said, come on up higher. I said, God, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Come on up higher, son. God, I'm mm -hmm. having a good time, God. Leave me alone. All of a sudden, everything went upside down. And all the people that loved me now hate me. Would God do that? The Bible says that the king's heart, and he turns it wherever he wants to turn it. So if he can turn a king's heart, he can turn a peasant's heart. Complacency. Tell somebody, don't be complacent. Don't, be complacent. don't get comfortable. Because God will make you uncomfortable. Amen. He will allow you to have a season where you are flowing and having a great time. He'll let you enjoy. He'll sit back and let you get glad. Go glad, girl. Having a good time. Yeah. But what they don't know is in about two months, <laughs> it's game time again. Oh God, why are you messing with me? Because I'm calling you to a higher place than me. And it's not for you. It's for somebody else. Hallelujah. Complacency. The other thing that can hinder it is spiritual brokenness. And when God spoke that to me, I said spiritual brokenness because what we, what we teach sometimes is that you have to be broken before God. Amen. We teach that. And I'm like, God, what do you mean spiritual brokenness? Aren't we supposed to be broken before you? And God said to me, well, I'm not talking about that type of brokenness. The type of brokenness I'm talking about is a brokenness of your emotions. It's a brokenness where we come into the church and we begin to have this, this, this pity party. Uh, a low self-esteem, if you will. Amen? Where we feel like God can't use me. Where we feel like I've done too much. Where we've allowed people to let us feel like we're too evil or too bad. Or we're no good. We're damaged good. God can't bless me. God won't bless me. God, mm -mm, I'll never get a wife. I'll never get a husband. Nah, God ain't going to bless me. I've, I've, I've been too bad. I've, I've done too much. Why would God do that for me? That type of brokenness. But God doesn't want us to be broken like that. Amen? That type of brokenness will cause you to not access your potential. Because if you're thinking like that, you can't see potential. Because all you see is what's in front of you. All you see is your past. All you see is the words that the enemy is speaking to you, telling you you're a wretch undone. You ain't no good. You'll never be this. You'll never do that. You'll never, 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 never. You remember you messed up that time. Don't try to do it again. And that type of brokenness causes us to almost die. And we say, when they come and they prophesy to you and they say, God's going to use you. Not me. Not me. You don't know me. I don't even know that story. You're not going to use you. Why would God use me? God said he is going to bless you. Why would God bless me? You know my best. You know what I've done. You know the dirt I need. You know the things I say. You know the, the places I've been. Oh, my God bless me. Nobody loves me. The devil is alive.